Good morning, brothers and sisters. Brother Will here. Before I go any further, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, it's great to be back with you, brothers and sisters. I know it's been a while. Um, I, I want to start with uh, a couple of verses. I have a lot to get through today, but um, I want to start with these two verses because uh, they were super encouraging to me. Another watchman uh, called my attention out to them, and then I realized that behind me, what you're looking at here in real time are almond blossoms. Okay, so I want to read these couple of, uh, of verses just to get the encouragement flowing right away. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Amen. He will perform his word. And here's the other uh, encouraging section here. This is from Ecclesiastes <clears throat> chapter 12. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Brothers and sisters, we are about to go to our eternal home. Amen. The Lord is about to accomplish his word. Um his vast word that has so many prophecies about the rapture in it. And um, <clears throat> yet I've been praying a while about what my next video should be. And really what, what eventually the Holy Spirit gave me just this morning is that it is impossible to overhype the rapture. I'm going to get into that more in a second, but um, that's the gist of it. And just a couple of things first. So, uh, some of it asking like, where have you been? Like, are you okay? Are you still alive? And, um, you know, it's like that verse in, uh, so, I believe it's second Timothy, um, where Paul says, you know, be ready in season and out of season. And, um, I'm always, I'm always hopefully <laughs> by the power of the Holy Spirit, hopefully ready to, um, you know, be ready in season and out of season, obviously. I just, for the past several months, I've, I've felt like it was, quote unquote, a little out of season because, you know, most of the appointed times had passed. If you uh, watch a lot of Dr. Barry, you understand that, like, there are appointed times when God usually performs his, his miraculous feats among men. And so we were kind of in, it's not that I wasn't watching, I've been, I've been uh, watching daily with uh, Brother Mike and Tony and Kevin and all the Watchmen community, I've, I've been watching you guys as well, but... I've been in my tent making phase with uh, just taking care of four kids. So, you know, the Apostle Paul made tents as well as writing epistles. So um, that's really what I've been up to. But now I think all of us can sense that we're about to enter the highest watch period of all time. By the way, as usual, the chickens, I tried to move further away from the chickens near the almond tree blossoms here, but um, I know they're still in the background. Um, so apologies for those of you who don't like the chicken sounds. Um, but uh, where was I? Um, yeah, we're about to enter the highest watch time of all time. And I really think, you know, it starts this weekend. It starts this weekend from March 10th, which is the, the new moon. And not saying watching for rapture necessarily this weekend, because but I, it, we know it starts Ramadan. We know that things in Israel are ready to pop off any moment, literally. So um, I, I think high watch from just a standpoint of major events in God's timeline. Um, and then, of course, that goes all the way through uh, April with um, the eclipse we're all looking at, which I'm not going to go really in-depth in the eclipse, although I do have a nugget that the Holy Spirit pointed out to me that I don't think anyone else has talked about. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't watch every video out there. but um, So we've got the eclipse on April 8th. <clears throat> 
all the way to uh, Resurrection Day, uh, if you watch Dr. Barry w about the one, 117. So, which would take us basically till April 26th, 27th. So from March 10th April tw to April 26th, 27th, I think we're going to see some major stuff go down. And hopefully it's our escape. Um, hopefully that's when, with, with the almond blossoms, the Lord is going to fulfill his word and man is going to go to his long eternal home. Amen. Um, so a couple of other things uh, before I get to the meat of this. Um, I do 100%, if you look at the videos that I last did, I 100% believe we're still in the Jubilee year that goes until, you know, the, the new year on the Jewish calendar this coming fall feast, okay? So until then, we're still in the Jubilee year. And if you looked at my, um, those videos, I said in them, just hypothesizing, it wasn't like, you know, the Holy Spirit told me or anything, just hypothesizing that I think this will be the year that the Jews get their temple. And what are we about to see? We're about to see the red heifer be sacrificed potentially here very soon. Um, once that happens, <laughs> then, uh, and, and I forget the verse verbatim, but basically the, the next temple that's going to be built is going to be built at haste, you know, with like pitch and all, and like, you know, in, in the streets kind of thing, it's going to be, it's not going to, it's not, they're not going to have the luxury of Solomon where he could just like get all the artisans to come in and like, you know, do everything, um, just so and have all the the luxury of time so you know if if war breaks out in jerusalem i mean it's already israel's already at war but if it if it actually comes to jerusalem and something happens to the dome of the rock or those places uh they've already they're they're going to be sacrificing the red heifer here pretty soon so i i don't think it's any stretch at all to think that they could throw the temple up this year um before the fall feast i'm saying so again, I'm, I'm just kind of looking to see that. We know it has to, we know that's going to come soon because we're about to enter the tribulation time period here in the next, you know, whether it's in the next couple months or, you know, the, the longest, the next couple years. So, so we know that, um, that that's going to happen soon. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah. So these other verses, um, with regard to the eclipse. Okay. April 8th, for those of you who um, maybe haven't seen, but I, I don't know how it's possible if you're watching a Watchman channel that you haven't seen. Um, so April 8th is the eclipse that's coming, right? And we know that it's kind of the final piece in those Hebrew uh, alphabet letters with the, the direction that the eclipse uh, is making in conjunction with the previous eclipses. eclipses, And that, you know, the, the first one that went over in, I believe it was 2017, was... Um, uh, it went through, you know, seven towns of Salem, and now it's going through towns of Nineveh, and there's going to be an actual, there's one city called Rapture that it's going to be in, and it's right there by the Ark uh, exhibit. Um, so it's, all this is going, then, of course, the New Madrid fault line, it's all right there, okay? Other watchmen have talked all about this. Um, but here's the, the cool little nugget that the Holy Spirit was pointing out to me, and um, let me read these couple of verses here. Psalm 81.3, blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Okay, now, this, that's King James, King James Version. In the time appointed, if you look at the Strong's, it's, it could say, or full moon. Okay, so, blow the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, or full moon, on our solemn feast day. Okay, keep that in mind, and then I want to read this next one here for you. Uh, this is one we've heard a lot, in at least if you watch my channel, I've mentioned it before. And this is um, Proverbs, where it talks about the good man, okay? For the good man is not at home, he has gone on a long journey, the good man being Jesus. Um, he hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. And again, that day appointed could mean, in, in Hebrew, full moon, or new moon, it says. So so in that in that previous scripture I just read, it talked about, um, below the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed, which could mean full moon. So we have this, what I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to point out here is we have this kind of in the Hebrew, um, where it's, where it could mean new moon or full moon, new moon or full moon and appointed time. Okay. And totally impressed upon me by the Holy spirit, April 8th, that eclipse that's coming is happening on a new moon. That's the first day of the month, yet it's going to block out the entire sun. So basically, 
you're going to get a day where it's both the new moon and the quote-unquote full moon blocking out the sun. Thank you, Holy Spirit, all praise, all glory, all honor to you, because that was just a massive revelation where how often do we get that? How often do we get the full moon covering the sun, but actually at night it's the new moon? Just let let that uh, let that encourage you, brothers and sisters. Let the Holy Spirit, um, you know, confirm that to your spirit as He did to mine, because to me that was a huge thing, um, because that that just doesn't happen very often. Um, with regard to new moon and full moons, the other thing when I was watching Dr. Barry's video from two videos ago that he did on the one one seven, what was very encouraging to me, if you've also watched my channel for a while, you'll know that. Myself, kind of like Ricardo and others, we, we've we kind of felt, you know, I watch every high watch day. Um, <coughs> I'm not dogmatic about any of this. But, um, you know, if you were to put me in a corner and say, when is the first month of the year? You know, when is Pat, what month is Passover in? I'm going to say it's when the sun is in Aries, okay? And all last year, um, because of that, Ricardo and myself and others, we were basically a month behind other Watchmen, or many other Watchmen, okay? Including Dr. Barry, which, I mean, I love, love you, Dr. Barry, and, and um, such an encouragement. Amazing. Like, his, he's taught me so much. But what was really encouraging to me is that now, based on his latest 117 video, um, the sun's in Aries again. So we're all in agreement. Um, at least those of us who are looking at you know, those, there's a, there's a whole nother cal calendar of Watchmen that are looking at um, basically Passover being in March, if I'm not mistaken. So um, there is that. Uh, but again, I, I look at all these dates. Um, you know, I'm just open to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And, and uh, I think all the Watchmen have something that the Holy Spirit is impressing upon them that will edify and, um, and encourage all of us. So um, we're all just human vessels. So... But when I saw that kind of those calendars kind of come together, the Ricardo calendar that's, you know, been off, been not off, but a month behind. And then um, the Dr. Barry calendar that was uh, a month ahead, quote unquote, last year. And now they're both on the same. Um, to me, that was also very significant because look, in, in Adar 2, the 13th Jewish month, I just don't, I don't see that in scripture. I think that was man's way of being impatient with the Lord. And the Lord says, you know, wait for these things to happen before your first month. And if man had always just done that, the calendar wouldn't have gotten off. But, uh, you know, the the impatient uh, humans that they were, they were like, you know what, we can't keep doing this. Let's put a 13th month in there and then we'll we get it all synced up and blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I just don't, the 13th month to me is, if you can find it in scripture and show it to me, I'm, I'm open to listen, but I, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think it should be a thing, let's put it that way. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, we have uh, all the Purim. Um, those who are watching at Purim, which that would be uh, basically coming up, you know, end of, end of March, beginning of April as well, right around that eclipse. So, um, and I think it was uh, Supernatural by Design did a great video on that. So, again... March 10th through April 26th, 27th, it's it's a ginormously huge high watch time. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, the, uh, so, so getting back to the actual point of this video, I was talking with someone, not talking, but I was, um, uh, a friend's Facebook, someone had posted, you know, why are, why are you watchmen or believers so obsessed with the rapture? And talking about the eclipse specifically, and, you know, this person was saying that they believe the, the eclipse is a harbinger for America, which I actually also believe it's a harbinger for America. I believe that, um, you know, America is Babylon the Great. If you go and look at... Actually, I'm probably... That's going to be one of my next videos, Lord willing, is I'm going to do a refresher on America's Babylon the Great because I had a video called um, The Rapture Will Empty Babylon the Great from maybe two years back or something, but that was when, you know... I didn't have near as many followers, so it was only seen by a handful of people. So I'm probably going <clears> to <throat> refresh that, or if you want to go watch it, 
it's it's it goes into a lot of what I'll be going into. But the point is, I do believe the eclipse is a harbinger for America, Babylon the Great. Absolutely. <clears throat> but what this person was saying, you know, why are you guys obsessed with the rapture? And, you know, I can't remember the exact worded wording they used. But the point is, I was talking with Brother Kevin about this. We cannot be too hyped about the rapture. We cannot be too... Um, <clears throat> we cannot obsess too much about it. Because here's the thing. <clears throat> and and I, I think the debate is still out there. <laughs> Kevin and I were talking about this. And I'll just ask you, you could tell me in the comments what you think. Do you believe the most important day in history was the day that Jesus died on the cross? Or do you believe that the most important day in history was the day that Jesus rose from, from the grave? Um, because I think there's an argument to be made for both. You could argue that without the cross, you wouldn't have the grave. The cross was the atonement for our sins, um, and yet the grave was the overcoming moment to show us all that he was who he said he was. And actually, I just want to take this moment before I go further into um, the most important day in history. I just want to say, if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't believed on him in your heart, if you haven't confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed on him in your heart that God raised him from the dead, um, then you need to do that right now because it's not too late to go in the rapture. It's not too late to escape what is coming upon this earth, um, to be counted worthy to escape what's what's coming on this earth. As Jesus said, always pray that continually that you'll be counted worthy to escape what's coming on this earth. And how do we become worthy? By receiving Jesus' sacrifice, what he did on the cross for you. He is the only way the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. So take this moment before before it's too late and, and, and the rapture happens and you're stuck and have to go through the tribulation. Take this moment if you haven't yet and just allow Jesus to ask you personally, who do you say he is? And respond, confess with your mouth that he is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Amen. And you will go with us in the rapture. For those of you who, who didn't pray this prayer, maybe you're watching this video after the rapture occurs, just do not take the mark of the beast, okay? Because, and this, this is now the segue into the most important day of all time, because there will be the greatest revival of all time when the, when the rapture happens. So if you're watching this after the rapture, maybe you're one of those hundreds of millions or billion of people, uh, a number no man can count, that come to the Lord because of the rapture, that come out of the great tribulation. <coughs> And so that goes back to what I don't I don't know what you would say the greatest day in all time is of all time is. Would you say it's the would the crucifixion or would you say it's the resurrection? I if if I would probably say it has to be the resurrection um, because that's when he overcame. So then I would say probably the crucifixion is a, is a close second. But after those two days, I think it could be argued greatly that the rapture is the greatest day in history. More so than the, uh, you know, Moses parting the Red Sea. More so than the Great Flood. More so than um, any of those, you know, Walls of Jericho, uh, Pentecost, um, all of those. I mean, the rapture will be greater than all of those because if you look at all the types and shadows that several watchmen have been pointing out through Scripture, what we're actually discovering, what all the, the Holy Spirit has brought out through all the watchmen, is that... The rapture is all through scripture. It is talked about, it is mentioned, the, the word harpazo, not just that, but but all of these types and shadows of the escape and uh, Enoch and Elijah and all of these various biblical stories, they are all types and shadows of the rapture happening. So not only is it prophesied throughout all scripture, and there's so many prophecies in scripture that, that mention the rapture that just people don't even mention very often. Actually in my, you know, the rapture will empty Babylon the Great video, I talk about that. Um, I talk about where it talks about Babylon the Great being emptied by being harvested, okay? So um, there's lots of rapture verses that people don't talk about or just, you know, they haven't been really, you know, popularized in watchman circles or, or just in regular Christian circles. Um, but it is all through Scripture. And not only that, as I mentioned, it will be the catalyst for the greatest revival of all time. You will have... So many people who have been 
you know, <laughs> ridiculing us who talk about the rapture all the time or who are watching all the time or who want to take everything, you know, to end times and the, the current events to end times and where they fit on God's calendar and everything else. You have those people who have been ridiculing us or who think we're crazy or who just don't care and whatever, roll their eyes. And they will understand that what they've been hearing out of our mouths for years now, um, the Holy Spirit will bring it to their remembrance and they will believe. And that will be the greatest revival of all time. As I mentioned before, we have that arm of Christendom who kind of maybe is not looking for the rapture and they're looking for a great revival. They're still believers. They're still going to go on the rapture whether they believe it or not. Um, they're still believers if they give them their, their you know, life to Christ and believed on him. Um, but uh, at the same time, they're looking for this great revival to come. They've been all these prophecies about this great revival coming, and those prophecies are correct. There is the greatest revival of all time coming, but it's going to come about because of the rapture. Um, that brings me to another point just of, of encouragement that I've been wanting to, to mention. And um, Dr. Barry touched on this a little bit as well. When he, and um, Jayco and others, when they talk about their their harvest models with regard to the barley harvest, wheat harvest, and you know grape harvest or, or summer fruit harvest. And um, here's the thing: I want to encourage all of you because, as you know from my channel, I've gotten lots of dreams and visions and words. Okay, and a lot of times those dreams and visions and words have seemingly pointed to a specific moed. Okay, a specific, whether it be Feast of Trumpets, whether it be Shavuot, whether it be Passover, what have you. Um, a lot of people, a lot of in the Watchman community, they're absolute born again believers with the Holy Spirit within them and inspiring them and giving them these words of knowledge and so forth. Okay, all of these people in in God's body of believers, you know, been, been getting these dreams that seemingly would contradict each other, but they don't. Because here's the thing. How many times in scripture with prophets like Jeremiah, Isaiah, you know, pick pick one. Most of the time, those prophecies were for people following them, right? So what I'm trying to get at is a lot of us in the Watchman community, and this is something that the Holy Spirit kind of just like impressed upon me over time with these dreams and visions we've been getting. Yes, some of them could be for our escape. Absolutely, 100%. But when you have a born-again believer with the Holy Spirit in them saying, the Holy Spirit told me the rapture is happening in Feast of Trumpets, and another one saying, the Holy Spirit told me that it was happening, you know, Shavuot or Feast of Wine or Pentecost or whatever, well, they can't both be right with regard to the first escape, right? They can't both be right with regard to this one ginormous event we're expecting. However, if there are those three harvest models and we have the mid-trib escape for the two witnesses and the believers that come out of great tribulation, I, I wholeheartedly believe that some of these words are for those people, are for those groups of people that are coming after us. So we've been getting these dreams and visions and words, and they, they don't all apply to us. You know, when Jeremiah wrote this book, so much of it applies to us now, currently. These prophecies are, are only now going to be fulfilled. So, um... I say that as an encouragement not to beat yourself up if you go, Lord, did I just miss here? Or, you know, because I, I know all of us want to be, you know, 100% true to what the Holy Spirit is is revealing to us. So, um, and, and you know, some people, if you look at my videos, I you know, I, I had um, just as a transparent moment, you know, I talked with Kevin about this. You know, so many of my videos, I could say the same thing about because I have this dream that talks about the Harvest Festival and I had this dream that talks about Shavuot and so forth and so on. But, um, you know, I just had to get with the Holy Spirit one day and I was like, you know, do I take these videos down? And the Holy Spirit simply asked me, who, who gave you those dreams? Who gave you those words? Who gave you those visions? And I was like, well, not me, it was you. And so he said, okay then. So what's the issue here? You know, so I'm leaving them there for whoever they're for. Okay, because in faith, I believe that that's that's one hundred percent what they are, and that he will going back to the first scripture we started off with today, Jeremiah chapter one, he will fulfill his word, he will bring about what he decrees, what he says will happen. Amen, and we got the almond blossoms here as just further encouragement to us, so um, I think this is a great place to wrap it up, guys, but just be encouraged, hey, if you're a pastor. If you are uh, on the leadership team of a church and you're not hyping the rapture and you're not talking about the rapture 
24 seven to get people to wake up those who still haven't woken up yet do it okay this is your exhortation to just tell everyone you know guys tell everyone you know about the gospel about jesus's saving grace and how he redeemed them from death and destruction and eternal separation from god and how he's given them eternal life and that the culmination of all things is coming the culmination of all things we are living in these last moments and the rapture is going to take place very soon. Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. So just tell it far and wide. It's 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 not the time for waiting is is long past. Okay? So be encouraged, be exhorted, brothers and sisters. I love you. It's great to be back. I look forward to doing more videos now that we are firmly in the season and um yeah, as we always say on this channel and everything that we say and do, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. God bless you.